Hi, welcome back. This is Shelley Latwin from GV Design Canada, and this is part two of our series of matrix setting videos. Again, I just want to recap that these are guidelines that I've been following for the last 20 years of using matrix and teaching. These are to help your setter be able to do their job effectively, be able to set the stones securely. Okay. So in this part two, we're going to be talking about bezel cutter. So you can see that we've got this die struck head, six claw, and then we have this half bezel with a little fleur-de-lis on the side. Okay, so if you've never used bezel cutter, let me show how it works. And then as I'm showing you how it works, I'm gonna talk about the thicknesses of the prongs and the thickness of the half basil here. Okay, so let's just select both these and we're gonna delete it. Let's go into Gems, Gem Loader, raise the menu up. I'm on tab two, so I want a 6.5 millimeter gemstone. And I'm gonna select the stone, tap F6. Let's go to build a bezel. Okay, and what I would like is I don't want the standard bezel. So if I hit reset, there we go. So I don't want this bevel edge. Okay, so we're going to bring back the chamfer in X and in Z. Okay, so we want this. And what I want to do is I want my claws or prongs to be about one millimeter by one millimeter. So I'm just going to pull this into about one millimeter. And let's go to the through finger viewport and I'm going to pull this down a bit and I'm going to angle it. Now I'm just going to go about 20 degrees here. Let's go back into perspective and again you just want an airspace down here at the bottom. You want to see the bottom of the gemstone. Okay. Do I want it that tall? Maybe I'll just bring it up just a smidge and angle it. Okay, what have I got here? About seven. Okay, now the other thing too is with Head Builder, you'll notice that the claws or prongs are a bit taller. So let's raise up our seat depth. So we're above the top of our stone. Okay, so we'll go ahead and press enter. All right, so now the next thing I wanna do is I'm gonna go into looking down viewport and I just wanna make some guidelines for myself. What you can do is go to curves polyline and I'm going to turn wireframe on. So if I hit the arrow down and go to wireframe, there we go. So I just kind of want to see through. And then I'm just going to come up two and across one and then back down to two. Okay, it doesn't really matter what the length is. All I really want is a guideline of this width here of one millimeter. Okay, and so let's start the builder now. So if I select the gemstone, tap F6, Let's come down to bezel cutter and out pops six cutters. Okay, so it does default with six cutters and which makes it really easy to do this six claw head. So here's our cutters and what we're seeing here, again, we have the arrows for scaling, we have the boxes for moving and we have the circles for rotating. Okay. So we've got Boolean turned on to yes. So we want to use the interactive Boolean. We're going to click on the word surface and then it's going to say select the surface to cut out. Let's go ahead and click on it. And there you go, voila, we get to see a preview of what these cutters are doing over here. And we also have the cutter in wireframe. So if I go to the looking down viewport, I'm going to grab this arrow Y inside and that's why I made 
this line here. Now, because this is slightly curved, I can just pull this out so that I'm going to get this to be about one millimeter wide. Now, you'll also notice too that these taper. If you like this taper effect, perhaps this might have to be a little uh, wider or what you can simply do is if we grab the Y outside size and pull it out. There we go. Now the, let's go to perspective. So that's not going to hold anything. Okay, so let's go back to looking down. And then if I grab the Y inside and pull it in, there you go. We've almost got a rectangle and that's what I would like. And so we've got the measurements of these prongs. Okay, now, as I said, move a little bit, and then you're going to let go, move a little bit more, let go. So have a little patience with this tool. Okay, so boxes move, so let's find Z and let's move this down a bit. Okay, and cutter angle, so circles rotate. Now you can see that this is getting a little thicker here, not to worry. Let's find the Y box because Y will move things in. So that's looking pretty good. But I may have to come back to Z and just pull it up so that I can get back to this one millimeter. Okay, so again, this is so much back and forth changing the cutter angle, moving it in with Y. Okay, maybe moving it out with Y. Have a little patience. Maybe even if we adjust the cutter length, there we go. That's what I want. And now I can pull down in Z. Okay, so my cutter was a bit too short. Now it looks like we're a little bit too thin here. So again, let's bring the inside cutter in a bit, okay? So we're making this thinner so this can get thicker, okay? And again, it's curving a little bit and I don't think I like that. So again, cutter length, there we go. So nice and tall and thin. So. It's just going to take a little bit of time and it might have something to do with this. I might be too far over here. And there we go. Spend a lot of time on that. Okay. That's our first cut. Okay. So we got to press enter to kill the tool. Okay. So now if I want to do those nice little cuts down in this area here, I got to select the stone again, tap F6. Let's come back down to bezel cutter. And again, the cutters remember where they once were. So if we come up here where it says prong position equals even, let's click on that to toggle it to odd. Okay, and then with the cutter angle, let's take this and let's swing it around. Okay, so they basically rotated about 30 degrees. All right, now the cutter that I'm using is sort of rounded on the end here. Let's click on that. I kind of like using this bezel 007. <laughs> and we'll hit select as the one down on the bottom because it comes in more as a point. So let's select our X outside. Let's bring those in a bit. And again, remember Y brings things in and Z brings things up and X, stay away from X because X will give you the windmill effect, which is kind of cool, but not what we want to do right now. You can experiment with the windmill later. So let's go back to zero. Okay, so boolean equals yes. Click on the word surface. We'll select the head. And okay, so we've got a tiny little nick there. So let's find Z again. 
Maybe bring it up a bit. Okay, so there you go. We're getting kind of a nice star effect down at the bottom. But if we grab the cutter angle, let's just pull it up a bit. So again, don't be, be careful about here too. You don't want to cut away too much on that prong there. And maybe we'll bring X out a bit. So you could have a lot of fun making these types of heads. Now, can you pick up the phone and call a findings company and order one of these? Absolutely. Get it, shipped overnight, highly polished. But if you want to do something custom for your client or perhaps it's Friday and you need to get it on her hand by Monday and you can print Friday night cast yourself on Saturday and then finish the job on Sunday, there you go. And then you're not waiting for the mail to arrive with a die struck head for you. Okay, the other nice thing about these die struck heads is that you've got a lot of strength down at the bottom. So if your client does not want a double rail setting, then you've got some strength here with it being a little bit heavier on the base. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and press enter. So there's our die struck head. Okay, so you can go ahead if we wanted to select it and drop it in a job bag. Okay, so let's delete this and I'll delete that. Let's go into that half bezel. So with selecting the gemstone and tap F6, we could go build a bezel or I'm not sure if you've used match attributes at all, but if we click on match attributes, there's history with this stone. So the command line says select object to take the style sheet from. We'll select the stone. And it knows that we've built a bezel on this stone before and we've used bezel cutter. So let's select bezel and we get a little orange sphere beside it. Let's hit create and voila, we get our bezel back. But this isn't the bezel we wanna use. So let's tap F6, let's edit the bezel and maybe I'll bring the bezel angle out a bit. And let's go in the through finger viewport. Now, I'm gonna raise this up. One thing that I haven't mentioned is you wanna make sure that your bezel is at least one millimeter from the Q-lit, okay? Right now we're in preview shade mode. So if I come over here to display, turn that off, we can see through to our bezel now. So. You want to make sure you've got a minimum from the culet here of one millimeter. Now, sometimes on eternity bands, you don't have that luxury because again, you've got to be careful that the metal in between the fingers isn't too thick. And if the stones are large, you know, you may on an eternity band not have that luxury of one millimeter. But again, you're just going to hope that when they're cleaning the inside of the ring, that they're not grinding too much and that these culets don't end up touching the skin because that's going to make it uncomfortable. Okay, so try to at least get one millimeter from the point to the end of the bezel here. So let's turn preview shade back on and let's go back to perspective. Okay, now since this is a half bezel, we don't have to have our top thickness of one millimeter. Let's pull this in. I'm going to hold down shift and I know I was 0.5 before. Maybe we'll go 1.6 on this one. Okay, and then I'll just angle this in a little bit. Okay, so that's our setup for this half bezel. So we'll select the stone, tap F6, and we're going to come back down to bezel cutter. Okay, and again, it's going to remember our position where our last cuts were. Now, we only want two cutters, and let's talk about that. Um, if I raise the menu up, the last button here is number of cutters, and this is misleading. You cannot do an odd number of cutters. It's only even. Okay, so sorry about that image there. You can have slide it all over and get two or eight. Now you can increase the number of cutters by hitting the plus sign. Okay, so if you want to go all the way up to 14, and this is quite interesting. So if I swing this up, oops, <laughs> I 
Okay, I gotta get at the right angle here. And maybe make this a little thinner. Okay, so let's try, so Boolean's on. Let's click on the word surface. Let's click on it. It looks like it's been cut by one of those Ginsu cutters. Okay. And the thing is, is if we go back to the number of cutters, if I use the slider, it's not going to go to 12, 10. It just automatically drops down to 8. Okay, we want to. So let's pull that all the way down. Okay, and let's rotate this. Oops, yeah, there we go. So that we're at a zero angle. Okay, now the cutters are overlapping. So let's find Y and pull them apart. Okay, and we can grab the inside and let's pull that out. And I usually pull it out to the edge of the table there. Now, uh, I want to change my cutter, so let's go into the library and we can choose this bezel 02 and select. And then I'm going to come back here with Z and pull it up a bit because I want to make sure that I've got enough metal here. Okay, so there's our first cut to do that half bezel. We'll go ahead and press enter. So it'd be ready to go if you did not want to put a little cut here. Let's select the stone, tap F6, go back to bezel cutter. Our prong position equals odd. We'll click on that and go to even. And we can find the Y inside and the Y outside. Pull that down and boolean equals yes, surface, click on the surface and now we get a little window. Click on the library and if we scroll down there's all kinds of shapes in here. You can make your own and store them in here and perhaps that'll be another video one day. Let's go ahead and select it. And there's our little fleur de lis and maybe let's pull this in a bit. There we go. And if we find the Z, we'll pull it down. Okay, and maybe I'll just, oops, Y outside. No, I want the Y inside just a bit. You gotta be careful too that we may not wanna see that girdle. So again, this builder with a little bit of patience you can make some pretty cool stuff. So as I said, I'm moving slow. Move it, let go, see what you get. Move again, let go, see what you get. Okay, we're going to go ahead and press enter. Okay, so that is our video on bezel cutter. I do teach online classes. You can reach out to me at my email address. And again, this is Shelley Letwin, and hopefully you'll be back for part three, which will be Head Builder. Thanks for sitting in.